I think it speaks to the politics of naming, and, and by politics I mean that there's a negotiation of power at play. And so for me, I take it from another angle. I just had this conversation with some students last week as one of these Black History Month kind of brown bags, and students are trying to deal with this notion of how do we identify, are we black, are we African American? And these are students who are in college now, so they're born after Jesse Jackson's 1988 statement that you know we prefer African Americans. So for them, in their consciousness, black is negative, period. Um, but at the same time, they don't hold any particular loyalty or allegiance to the African part of the hyphenated identity. And so for me, as a Pan-African nationalist, I see black as a unifying term, and I think it speaks to something um, Dr. Vega said in her introduction, you know, what's at stake? And for me, I just don't know that we have the luxury to identify how we want to, you know what I mean, as individuals. Um, perhaps we should be thinking about the interests of the group. Um, and again, in terms of African American, for me, I also see it as kind of indicative of American arrogance in a lot of ways, because people who come from other spaces the minute they hit this country, even though the space does not afford them all of the quote unquote luxuries that come with being American, you're forced to identify as American. And so I think it's, it's, it's arrogant in a lot of ways to have people who don't have access to whatever it means to be American and say, okay, you know, you're, you're African American, all of you. It's like, for me, it's like a form of classification, but there's so many different types, like, you know, Afro-Latina or Black, I say Black-Latina, she says um, Afro, what do you say, Afro? Well, I mean, I, that's the thing, I, I'll say Black, Latina. Yeah, I mean, no, right, it doesn't, African. some people say Caribbean, American, there's so many different ways of saying it, so it's hard. I was reading an article that the census even still uses Negro, so, I mean, it all depends on what you feel comfortable with. Um, but it's hard because although we're all part of this one category, we're all very separate. So you're still trying to keep your identity and say, well, I may be African American, but I'm a Caribbean African American. Or I am, you know, there's all these different classifications within it. So some people don't feel comfortable with being under it, and then others do. So where do you go from there? Um, I think also, it's quite right what you all said, but there are elements of like the history of uh, people from Africa in this continent that those elements like, tell you a lot about what has been going on and especially when you look at labels any label you look at the narrative of Western civilization and history and you look at Greek um, labels how they divided people you know the Greek people the Romans how they did so and what how they attributed these labels of barbarian and what not, and even just labels of you are foreign, you know, you're not from here, you're not part of us, you don't belong to this elite that has the control. So I'm quite skeptical and I always look at any kind of label that I have not chosen for myself as suspicious. You know, especially anything coming out of a colonial or post-colonial reality. Uh, when we look like in the dictionary, you know, and we look at an etymological dictionary uh, for the Spanish language, you find that mestizo, is the word that Spaniards used before they came here to talk about, uh, you know, babies that came from different groups, different races of animals, like a donkey and a horse. You know what I mean? Uh, that produces something called mula or mulo, and that mule it's like uh, infertile. It can't have babies. It cannot produce. So it's a mongrel. You know, it's the English word for a mongrel. So you have the mulato, mulata label being placed on these people who are the product of the same genetic human only group that there exists. And then they later accept that term and they call themselves mulato and mestizo. And this has become widespread through a scholarship in all of the Americas and even Europe. It's okay to say mulato, it's okay to say mestizo, but it's not okay, it's not okay to say nigger because there is a clear consciousness that comes from, you know, all this book learning and digging into the experiences of people within the United States that creates a paradigm, as uh, Martha was saying earlier. And this paradigm causes us to sometimes like, buckle under the pressure of saying, yeah, I am black, or I am you know, a black Latino, or I am African American. Whereas the first question I would ask regarding where Chantrell began from would be, 
you know, wait a minute, like, do I need more than Rogelio? And is my skin color important other than like if I mug someone on the streets? <laughs> and I have, you know, they, they have to give the description of who robbed them. Oh, you know, it's about 5'10", blonde eyes, blue hair, he looked like Brad Pitt. <laughs> other than that, like, what's the necessity of focusing so much on color, you know? Like I was just showing Yava my cellula from Santo Domingo where I'm a law student. And it says they're piel, you know, skin, skin color, Indian, you know? And that's the way that the Dominican government tries to perpetuate the same sort of labeling that the American government, uh, uh, you know, pushes on us. You know, I remember the first time I came to the States in 1991, you know, I applied to about five, six universities. And each one of these forms asked me to indicate whether I was Hispanic or Latino or white or black. And I went to my father, because, you know, sometimes are able to think clearly and logically. I said, Dad, what should I do here? He said, well, just check his back. You know, don't start trouble. Let's <laughs> 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 check that. But thereafter, you know, when I was walking around the Syracuse campus, no Latino ever said to me on the, on, the, on the campus, hey, brother, how you doing? But every African-American male was like, hey, brother, how you doing? Oh, yeah, well, there's something going on here. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I think, has to be looked at before we looked at what label is appropriate or not, whether the label in itself is completely necessary, and what kind of interest in politics and segregation it brings about.